woman lying on the pavement in the Warsaw Ghetto, starving to death, 1941. On 2 October 1940, Ludwig Fischer, governor of the Warsaw district in the occupied general government of Poland, signed the order to officially create a Jewish district, ghetto, in Warsaw it was to become the largest ghetto in Nazi-occupied Europe. A portrait of a young woman wearing a striped blouse and an armband with the Star of David. All Jewish people in Warsaw had to relocate to the area of the ghetto by 15 November 1940 the ghetto was sealed on that date. Jewish residents of the ghetto shopping in a vegetable street market. In total 113,000 Gentile Poles were forced to resettle to the Aryan side and were replaced by 138,000 Jews from other districts of the capital the ghetto reached its highest number of inhabitants in April 1941. An elderly Jewish woman selling her scarce possessions in the street of the ghetto. Within its wall lived 395,000 Varsovians, residents of Warsaw, of Jewish descent, 50,000 of people resettled from the western part of the Warsaw district, 3,000 from its eastern part as well as 4,000 Jews from Germany, all resettled in early months of 1941, altogether there were around 460,000 inhabitants at an area of three. A Jewish man selling his bread allowance in the street of the ghetto, summer 1941. 4 km 2. 1 3 sq me, with an average of 7. An armband seller making a transaction in the street. Two elderly men on the left trying to sell pieces of rope, almost anything could be a subject of trade to earn money for food. Two persons per room 85,000 of them children up to the age of 14. Ghetto residents buying and selling bedsheets in a street market. During the first year and a half, thousands of Polish Jews as well as some Romani people from smaller towns and the countryside were brought into the ghetto nevertheless, the typhus epidemics and starvation kept the inhabitants at about the same number. A female tea seller serving hot drinks to customers in a makeshift cafe in a street market in the ghetto. An average daily food ration in 1941 for Jews in Warsaw was limited to 184 calories, compared to 699 calories allowed for the Gentile Poles and 2,613 calories for the Germans in August, the rations fell to 177 calories per person. A street armband seller and a group of pedestrians on 18 Zamenhofa Street, probably, in the ghetto, summer 1941. No two advertising plaques on the wall in the background, for senior medic, Starcy Felcher, named J. Singer, and for typewriting services, address given 18 Zamenhofa Street, flat number 38. The Holocaust Encyclopedia informs, that a food intake of less than 1,000 calories per day could lead to death in a matter of weeks the German authorities were solely responsible for the arrival of food aid, consisting usually of dry bread, flour and potatoes of the lowest quality, groats, turnips, and a small monthly supplement of margarine, sugar, and meat. A young boy selling a handful of sweets from a chair in the street. The only real means of survival was the smuggling of food and bartering, with men, women, and children all taking part in it up to 80% of food consumed in the ghetto was brought in illegally. A young and cheerful seller of newspapers and armbands running his stall in the street of the ghetto, possibly Muranowski Square. The title of the newspaper for sale is Gazeta Vidoska, Jewish Gazette. He also advertises Wrigley's chewing gum for sale, misspelled as Wrigley's. Private workshops were created to manufacture goods, 
to be sold secretly on the Aryan side of the city foodstuffs were smuggled often by children alone who crossed the ghetto wall any way possible in their hundreds sometimes several times a day, returning with goods that could wait as much as they did. A young man in the doorway of a shop in the ghetto. Nodi has taken his hat off to comply with the German order to remove headwear in the presence of German personnel. The shop offers fresh eggs, sweets and watches. The sign in the window reads, I buy old watches for top prices. However, between October 1940 and July 1942 around 92,000 of Jewish residents of the ghetto died of starvation, diseases and cold which accounted for nearly 20% of the entire population on 21 July 1942 the Nazis began the Gross Action Warsaw the operation of mass deportation of Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto to the Treblinka death camp, 80 kilometers northeast. A group of Jewish men and children posing for a photograph in the street of the ghetto. Note the man in the middle, holding a dog on his shoulder. By 21 September around 300,000 of the Warsaw Ghetto residents had perished in the gas chambers at the camp in October 1942 the Germans carried out a new population census, only 35,639 people remained in the ghetto, around 10% of the numbers registered in July of the same year. A starving man father and two emaciated children begging on the street in the ghetto. On 19 April 1943 the surviving remnants of the Jewish population of Warsaw rose to fight a final battle against the Nazis. The Nazi troops, led by SS Gruppenfuhrer Jürgen Stroop, systematically destroyed the Jewish district and eradicated any form of resistance. An emaciated mother with her twin daughters in the ghetto. 56,065 of the remaining Jews of Warsaw were killed in combat, murdered or deported to death camps by mid-May of 1943 the Warsaw Ghetto ceased to exist. Two emaciated children, one of them a sleeper unconscious, begging on the street of the ghetto. The photos shared on this article are taken by Willie Georg and a few by Heinrich Joest in the summer of 1941. Willie Georg, a German army signalman, visited the ghetto on his commanding officer's order. Two children begging for food on the street. A pre-war professional photographer, he took four rolls of films, around 160 images, during his one-day visit to the ghetto his Leica camera with a fifth roll was confiscated by a German police patrol when he was spotted wandering around ghetto's streets. A destitute Jewish child eating a piece of bread in the street of the ghetto. Fortunately for him, the other four in his pocket were not found there is some mystery about his photographs. A passerby giving money to two children. Why did many of the photographed subjects seem to respond so positively to him? Could it be he was in his civilian clothes rather than in his uniform? Did the ghetto residents know who he was? In some photographs it appears they did know he was a German serviceman. They removed their hats and look at him with stern faces perhaps he introduced himself or tried to speak to them in broken Polish. Can we assume his attitude towards the people he photographed was sympathetic, after all he preserved the images throughout the war and made them public afterwards. An elderly man lying on the pavement. Unfortunately we might never know the answer to these questions Willie Georg's photographs show a period in the ghetto's history when life for some of the inhabitants was still bearable. An emaciated boy sitting on a pavement. Note a crowd of pedestrians around him, including children with toys. People trade in the streets, housewives search for good quality bedclothes, children still find amusement in daily situations there is even limited selection of food for sale in some of the shop's windows. 
a destitute elderly woman begging in the street. Trams, operated by workers from the Aryan side, provide limited public transport services at the same time that these things were happening however, many others, particularly children and elderly, were dying of malnutrition in the streets. A teenage boy in ragged clothes standing by a waste container, produced by the Silesia Steelworks in Ribnik, in the ghetto. The contrast is shocking their situation is a sign of what was to come for the ghetto inhabitants, starvation, diseases and deportation to death camps. Two well-dressed women, most likely sisters, posing for a photograph in a street market. Photo credit, Imperial War Museums, Iwam Willy Georg Heinrich Joist Marius Gaysier.